So we're looking at aperture today and how aperture affects depth of field and also exposure. Now the easiest way to think about aperture is to actually compare it to the pupil of the human eye. For example, if we look into the sun, the pupil will contract to stop the eye from being damaged and reducing the amount of light that's entering into the eye. If we're in a dark environment, the pupil will actually expand to allow more light to enter into the eye. Now, we don't have control over the size of the pupil, however, when it comes to digital photography, we do have control over the aperture. The aperture is measured in f-stops or f-numbers, and the larger the f-number, the smaller the opening in the lens. The smaller the f-stop or f-number, the larger the opening in the lens. Now, lenses come with some information on them. First of all, we have the focal length. So in this case, it's a 50 millimeter prime lens. And then we have the number 1.8. Now, remember, a small number means the aperture is large, and a large number means that the aperture is small. Now, aperture also controls the depth of field. So, what is depth of field? Well, at this moment in time, I'm in focus, and anything next to me, adjacent to me, will also be in focus. This is called the focal plane. Everything outside of the focal plane, in front and behind, in this circumstance, is out of focus. That is because the aperture that we're using right now to film me is f2.8. So that's a low number, which means the aperture is very, very large. And having a large aperture means that the focal plane, first of all, this imaginary zone here in which everything is in focus, is very, very thin. So anything outside of the focal plane in front or anything behind the focal plane in the background will be out of focus and will become blurred. Now, if we increase our aperture number, our f-stop to say, for example, f22, this is gonna give us a very, very narrow aperture opening. But essentially, this changes now the depth of field. So this focal plane, which was once very thin and very shallow with the aperture of f2.8, will now become larger. We'll have a deeper depth of field. So depth of field essentially is the amount of the scene in relation to the focal plane or where you focused on the subject which is in focus. And if we have a large aperture, more of the scene will be out of focus. And if we have a small aperture, more of the scene will be in focus. Now shooting with a large aperture gives us that really nice out of focus look.
Okay, so here's the setup. We've got the Canon 5D Mark II with a 70 to 200 telephoto lens. This lens has a maximum aperture of f2.8. Um, we've got the lens mounted on a tripod here to ensure that all our shots are going to be really, really nice and sharp. Um, and we're going to be putting the camera into aperture priority mode because we want to be controlling the aperture here and we want to get that really nice depth of field and we don't want to worry about the shutter speed, we're going to let the camera decide what it thinks is the correct shutter speed. So we've got our aperture at f2.8, we've got our camera all mounted, ready. I'm going to uh, shoot at f2.8 because I really want that shallow depth of field that's going to put the background totally out of focus and really draw attention to the subject. So f2.8, that's the maximum the lens will uh, will give me the camera will work out the rest i'm going to focus in on the flower and recompose as necessary using the shutter half pressed and uh, let's see what we get absolutely gorgeous okay so i've uh, i focused right on the flower and i'm actually using the central focus point I, i'm not using uh, multiple focus points i've selected just the center point here and i'm half pressing the shutter getting that focus locked on right into uh, into the center of the flower with all the detail and then i'm recomposing and adjusting the camera to get that nice rule of thirds going there so the composition is nice and balanced let's take another one half press focus recompose 